हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय लेक्चर ऑन कन्फॉर्मल मैपिंग्स फ्रॉम हाफ प्लेन टू डिस्क एंड हाफ प्लेन टू हाफ प्लेन सो देर विल बी टू लेक्चर्स ऑन दिस टॉपिक दिस फर्स्ट ऑफ दोज टू लेक्चर्स लेट अस फर्स्ट डिफाइन इनवर्स पॉइंट्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू ए लाइन टू पॉइंट्स पी एंड क्यू आर सेट टू बी इनवर्स पॉइंट्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू ए लाइन से ए बी इफ क्यू इज द इमेज ऑफ पी इन ए बी दैट इज if the line ab is the right bisector of pq so if you take a line let's say ab then two points p and q are said to be inverse points with respect to the line ab if ab is the right bisector of pq okay uh, for example if you take uh, uh, in the z plane if you take the real axis okay x axis uh, the real axis then you take any complex number z the inverse point of uh, of the complex number z with respect to the real axis will be z conjugate okay so with respect to the real axis uh, the uh, z and z conjugate will be inverse points and with respect to y axis we shall have if uh, z is x plus i y then we will have minus z conjugate okay so that will be the inverse point okay for z with respect to y axis so with respect to x axis z and z conjugate are inverse points are inverse points with respect to x axis that is the real axis in the z plane Uh, z and minus z conjugate will be inverse points in the z plane with respect to the imaginary axis the y axis okay now let's see uh, how we define the inverse points with respect to a circle two points p and q are said to be the inverse points with respect to a circle gamma if they are collinear with the center so let's take any uh, circle okay so let's say so c is the center circle is gamma then two points p and q are called inverse points with respect to the circle gamma if they are collinear with the center okay if they are collinear with the center c and on the same side of it okay and if the product of their distances from the center is equal to r square that means cp into cq is equal to r square where r is the radius of the circle so uh, from the above definition it follows that every point other than the center of the circle you take any point other than the center of the circle it possesses a unique inverse okay the center of the circle and the point at infinity are inverse points for the circle now uh, this is uh, this uh, the center of the circle is consistent uh, the center of the circle and the point at infinity are inverse points for the circle this is also consistent with the condition p z1 z2 bar plus alpha z2 bar plus alpha bar z1 plus r equal to 0 for two points z1 z2 to be inverse points for the circle p z z bar plus alpha z bar plus alpha bar z plus r equal to 0 where p and r are real numbers this is the equation of any circle uh, uh, in our straight line in the z plane if p is not equal to 0 it represents a circle if p is equal to uh, 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 zero, then it represents a straight line in the z plane. So uh, uh, you can also see that p z z bar plus alpha z bar we can write as uh, if you divide this because p is not equal to zero, we can divide this equation by p. So then we get z z bar plus alpha by p into z bar plus alpha bar by p into a uh, z plus r by p equal to 0 so that we can write it as uh, z plus alpha by p into z bar plus alpha bar by p 
okay so this gives you z z bar plus alpha by p z bar plus alpha bar by p into z plus alpha alpha bar by p square so i can write it as uh, uh, alpha alpha bar minus r divided by p square okay so this gives you mod of z plus alpha by c equal to uh, square root of mod of alpha square minus r divided by p square okay because left hand side is uh, mod of alpha mod of z plus alpha by p square okay p conjugate we are not writing because p is a real number so this uh, equation represents a circle with center Uh, minus alpha by p center minus alpha by p and radius square root of alpha square mod of alpha square minus r divided by p square ok. So, for this uh, circle to uh, if we want z 1 and z 2 to be inverse points for this circle then the condition is this one this is the condition we are going to prove that this is the condition for z 1 z 2 to z 1 z 2 to be inverse points of this circle ok. Now, let us assume for this time being that uh, for z 1 z 2 to be inverse points of this circle the condition is this then from this condition we notice that z 2 bar z 2 bar is equal to uh, uh, minus alpha bar z 1 minus r divided by uh, p z 1 plus alpha ok. So, that uh, when z 1 is equal to minus alpha by p z 1 is equal to minus alpha by p z 2 is bar is equal to infinity which says that z 2 is equal to infinity. So, uh, the center center is uh, for the circle for the circle this one center is minus alpha by p ok and the, when we put minus alpha by p here ok in this condition then we get uh, for z 1 then we get z 2 bar to be equal to infinity and that z 2 equal to infinity. So, that means that the center uh, uh, z 1 and the uh, equal to minus alpha by p and z 2 equal to infinity are inverse points with respect to the circle uh, p z z bar plus alpha z bar plus alpha bar z plus r equal to 0. So, uh, the condition uh, which we have here this condition uh, for z 1 z 2 to be z 1 z 2 to z 2 to be inverse points for this circle is consistent with the fact that uh, if uh, the center minus alpha by p and the infinity are also inverse points with respect to uh, this circle ok. So, since the center of the circle uh, 2 is minus alpha by p taking z 1 equal to minus alpha by p in 3 ok we get z 2 r equal to infinity and so that z 2 is also equal to infinity. So, uh, uh, that condition now let us prove this condition that z 1 z 2 to z 2 uh, are inverse points for this circle then we have that condition. So, let us prove that. So, p z 1 z 2 bar plus alpha z 2 bar we have this condition p z 1 z 2 bar and then we have alpha z 2 bar and then we have uh, alpha bar z 1 plus r equal to 0. This is the condition which we have to prove and the circle is uh, circle is this one p z z bar p z z bar and then we have alpha z bar plus alpha bar z plus r equal to 0. So, we have to prove that for this circle ok uh, if z 1 and z 2 are inverse points then we this condition holds ok. Now, without any loss of generality we can assume that p equal to 1 ok because if p is not equal to 1 we can divide this equation by p and make the coefficient of z z bar equal to 1. So, without any loss of generality let us take p equal to 1 then the equation of the circle is uh, z z bar 
प्लस अल्फा जेड बार प्लस अल्फा बार जेड प्लस आर इक्वल टू जीरो एंड दिस वी कैन राइट एस जेड प्लस अल्फा इंटू जेड बार प्लस अल्फा बार इक्वल टू अल्फा अल्फा बार माइनस आर सो दिस इज नाउ मॉड ऑफ जेड प्लस अल्फा स्क्वायर इक्वल टू मॉड ऑफ अल्फा स्क्वायर इक माइनस आर अब विच इंप्लाइज दैट मॉड ऑफ जेड प्लस अल्फा इक्वल टू स्क्वायर रूट मॉड ऑफ अल्फा स्क्वायर माइनस आर ओके सो सेंटर ऑफ दिस सर्किल इज एट सेंटर इज एट माइनस अल्फा ओके एंड रेडियस इज अंडर रूट मॉड ऑफ अल्फा स्क्वायर माइनस आर नॉल एस टेक ए सर्किल ओके से दिस इज माइनस अल्फा सेंटर ओके P and Q are these points, which are inverse points with respect to the circle. Let us say P is complex number Z one and Q is complex number Z two. Okay. Then, if P and Q are inverse points with respect to the circle, then P and Q must be on the same side of the center and collinear with the center. Okay. So, what we have argument of Z one plus alpha. must be same as argument of z2 plus alpha that is the first condition because they have they are collinear with center and on the same side of it and moreover that op uh, this is let us say c okay cp into cq equal to radius square so this means that uh, cp that means modulus of z1 plus alpha into modulus of z2 plus alpha okay is equal to radius square so we have modulus of z1 plus alpha into modulus of z2 plus alpha equal to radius of the circle square so that is r square okay now uh, so there are two conditions this one condition number 1 this condition number 2 okay now let us notice that from condition 1 uh, argument of z1 plus alpha equal minus argument of z2 plus alpha Equal to zero. Now we can also say that argument of z2 plus alpha, argument of z2 plus alpha is equal to minus argument of z2 plus alpha conjugate. Okay. If z is any complex number, then uh, argument of z is same as minus argument of z conjugate. Okay. So making use of that, I can write it as argument of z1 plus alpha. a uh, plus argument of z2 plus alpha conjugate equal to 0 okay uh, r i can say argument of z1 plus alpha into z2 plus alpha conjugate equal to 0 now if argument of a complex number is 0 it will mean that z1 plus alpha Into Z2 plus alpha conjugate is a real positive number. Is real and positive. Okay. Now modulus of Z1 plus alpha, modulus of Z2 plus alpha equal to R square. The condition two gives us uh, modulus of Z1 plus alpha. now modulus of z is same as modulus of z conjugate okay so modulus of z2 plus alpha is same as modulus of z2 plus alpha conjugate equal to r square r i can say that modulus of z1 plus alpha into z2 plus alpha conjugate is equal to r square because modulus of z1 into z2 is equal to modulus of z1 into modulus of z2 okay so now there is a complex number whose modulus is r square and that complex number is real and positive so from this condition uh, this one this is condition number 3 and this condition number 4 okay from these two conditions it follows that okay from 3 and 4 
here we are saying that z1 plus alpha into z2 plus alpha conjugate is real and positive and here it, its modulus is r square so this complex number itself is r square okay so z1 plus alpha into z2 plus alpha conjugate Uh, equal to r square and this gives you what uh, z1 plus alpha into z2 conjugate plus alpha conjugate equal to r square. So, then this will be z1 z2 conjugate z1 z2 conjugate plus alpha z2 conjugate alpha z2 conjugate plus z1 alpha conjugate z1 alpha conjugate uh, z1 z2 conjugate plus alpha z2 conjugate plus z1 alpha conjugate plus alpha alpha conjugate is equal to uh, actually this r should be taken as uh, radius of the circle which I have taken it should not be taken as r it should be some uh, r dash uh, it will be better because here this r is not the uh, the radius of the circle this r is actually uh, uh, sc a certain real number and the radius is mod of alpha square minus r. So, this r you can write as say r 1 here it will be better ok. So, this I can write as r 1. So, then what we will have here r 1 square ok. So, then uh, if we do that so then this will be equal to z 1 z 2 conjugate plus alpha z 2 conjugate uh, plus z 1 alpha conjugate and then we have plus alpha alpha conjugate minus r 1 square is equal to 0 and this is then z 1 z 2 conjugate plus alpha z 2 conjugate uh, plus alpha conjugate z 1 plus r equal to 0. So, this r is where r is uh, you are alpha alpha 1 minus r 1 square ok. So, uh, alpha alpha conjugate minus r 1 square. So, what we are getting z 1 z 2 conjugate ok p we are taken as 1. So, z 1 z 2 conjugate alpha z 2 conjugate alpha conjugate z 1 plus r equal to 0. So, this radius of the circle which we are writing here as under root al mod of alpha square minus r this is actually r 1 ok. So, r 1 square is mod of alpha square minus r r we can say r is r is equal to mod of alpha square minus r 1 square ok. So, this r is alpha alpha conjugate minus r 1 square. So, radius of the circle is r 1 ok, uh, radius of the circle is r 1 and r 1 is under root uh, mod of alpha square minus r. So, uh, the condition for the circle p z z bar plus alpha z bar plus alpha bar z plus r equal to 0 uh, to have the inverse points z 1 z 2 as inverse points uh, is that p z 1 z 2 conjugate plus alpha z 2 conjugate plus alpha conjugate z 1 plus r equal to 0. So, this is how we prove this condition uh, that is uh, p z 1 z 2 conjugate plus alpha z 2 conjugate plus alpha conjugate z 1 plus r equal to 0 uh, has uh, is the condition for the circle p z z conjugate plus alpha z conjugate plus alpha conjugate z plus r equal to 0 uh, uh, to have the inverse points at z 1 and z 2. Now, let us go to uh, this uh, theorem which says that under a bilinear transformation w equal to s z inverse points with respect to a circle are mapped onto inverse points with respect to the image of the uh, circle gamma under s z. So, let us say at z 1 z 2 be uh, inverse points for the circle p z z conjugate plus alpha z conjugate plus alpha conjugate z plus r equal to 0 then we have this condition as we have proved just now p z 1 z 2 conjugate plus alpha z 2 conjugate plus alpha conjugate z 1 plus r equal to 0. Now, uh, let us consider the transformation uh, w equal to s z to be 
a z plus b over c z plus d where a d minus b c is non zero. Then uh, the, we can write the inverse bilinear transformation z equal to minus d w plus b over c w minus a. Let us put the value of z uh, as minus d w plus b over c w minus a in the uh, equation of the this one in the condition okay, p z 1 z 2 conjugate plus alpha z 2 conjugate plus alpha conjugate z 1 plus r equal to 0. So, let us put in this and see what is the condition that we get. Okay. So, then we get p times trans transform of 4. Okay. First we are transforming the circle. Okay. First we are transforming the circle uh, under the bilinear transformation uh, by putting z the value of z. So, the when you put the value of z we get p times minus w d w plus b over c w minus a this is the value of z then z conjugate. So, minus d conjugate w conjugate plus b conjugate over c conjugate w conjugate minus a conjugate because a b c d are a complex constants. So, we have to take their conjugates here. So, alpha times z conjugate then alpha conjugate z plus r equal to 0. So, so this is the uh, equation that we get under the bilinear transformation w equal to s z for the given circle in the w plane. Okay. Now, also the condition 5, okay. when the condition 5 is written in terms of w 1 w 2. So, let us see the, uh, okay. so this condition, okay. this condition let us write w 1 is the image of z 1 under the bilinear transformation w equal to s z and z 2 is the w 2 is the image of z 2. So, we have this uh, transformation p times uh, z 1 uh, w 1 uh, p times z 1 then here z 2 conjugate alpha times z 2 conjugate alpha conjugate z 2 plus r equal to 0 and you can see that this condition okay, shows that the points w 1 w 2 are inverse points for the image of gamma given by 6. Okay. This is the image of gamma okay. for this this is your p into this uh, 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 this is the image of gamma. So, when we want to write the uh, uh, condition for w 1 w 2 to be the uh, inverse points with respect to this image the, con the condition is this one. Okay. So, this condition we are using. Okay. So, this condition you can see we are getting here p z 1 z 2 conjugate plus alpha z 2 conjugate plus alpha conjugate z 1 plus r equal to 0 it is that it is of that type. Okay. So, this condition tells us that w 1 w 2 are inverse points for the image of the circle under w equal to s z the image is given by the equation 6. Okay. So, this condition shows that w 1 w 2 are inverse points for the image of gamma under uh, the w equal to s z. Now, let us find the uh, general bilinear transformation which maps the half plane upper half plane uh, upper half of z plane that is uh, imaginary part of z greater than or equal to 0. So, the boundary of the upper half of the uh, z plane this is imaginary part of z greater than 0 boundary is real axis. Okay. On the real axis imaginary part of z is equal to 0 which is by by equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, it wa we want to map it onto the unit disk in the w plane. Into this region. Okay. Now, uh, let us consider the general bilinear transformation w equal to a z plus b over c z plus d. We know that it represents a bilinear transformation when a d minus b c is not equal to 0 a b c d are any complex constants. Okay. Now, first thing that we notice is that if c is equal to 0 then if c is equal to 0 then a d is not equal to 0. So, a and d cannot be 0. So, then w is equal to a by, z, uh, a by d into z plus b by d we get a linear mapping. Okay. Under a linear mapping in infinity z equal to infinity goes to w equal to infinity. Okay. So, then this implies that the infinities in the two planes will correspond. The infinity uh, uh, of the z plane will map Uh, into the into the infinity of the w plane ok. 
okay so this means that z equal to infinity uh, uh, of the uh, uh, jet plane will go into infinity so that in that case what will happen the uh, image uh, of uh, imaginary part of z greater than 0 will not be bounded we want the imaginary part of z to go to a bounded region okay mod of w less than or equal to 1 so w does not uh, mod of w less than or equal to 1 is a bounded region and therefore it does not contain infinity w equal to infinity so z equal to infinity if goes to w equal to infinity then the image then the image of imaginary part of z greater than or equal to d, uh, 0 will not be uh, mod of w less than or equal to 1 okay so uh, c hence c cannot be 0 okay so when c is not equal to 0 we can write w equal to a by c into z plus b by a divided by z plus d by c okay now let us see uh, this transformation okay here what happens is z equal to b minus a goes to uh, maps into uh, w equal to 0 which is the center of the circle mod of z equal to 1 and uh, z equal to minus d y c maps to w equal to infinity ok. Now, we want the imaginary part of z greater than 0 to map into the interior of mod of w equal to uh, 1. Now, z, this uh, z w equal to 0 and w equal to infinity are inverse points with respect to mod of w equal to 1. So, they must be the images of the inverse points with respect to the real axis okay? because real axis is the boundary here okay? w equal to 0 and w equal to infinity are inverse points. with respect to mod of w equal to 1. So, uh, z equal to minus b y a and z equal to minus d y c must be inverse points with respect to the real axis of the jet plane which means that if z equal to b minus b minus b y a if this is alpha if minus b y a equal to alpha then minus d y c must be equal to alpha conjugate. Now, one more thing we notice that uh, minus b y a okay, uh, this is z plane, this is w plane. Okay. We have this model w equal to 1. So, the interior imaginary part of z greater than 0, okay. this we want to map to interior here of mod of w equal to 1 and minus b y a is uh, going to w equal to 0 okay this is w equal to 0 so minus b y a must be a point of the imaginary part of z greater than 0 okay so uh, since uh, minus b y a is mapped to uh, w equal to 0 which lies at the center of mod w equal to 1 minus b y a equal to alpha must be a point of imaginary part of z greater than 0 ok. So, that which that which imply that uh, imaginary part of alpha must be greater than 0 ok our imaginary part of minus b by a must be greater than 0 ok. So, now 
we can have we can write w equal to a by c into z plus b by a means z minus alpha and z plus d by c means z minus alpha conjugate ok. So, our transformation w equal to a by c into z plus b by a divided by z plus d by c now uh, transforms to w equal to a by c into z minus alpha over z minus alpha conjugate. Now, we want uh, this uh, boundary of the region imaginary part of z greater than 0 to map to the boundary of mod of w less than 1. So, here boundary is mod of w equal to 1, here boundary is imaginary part of uh, z equal to 0 that is the x axis. So, let us take uh, the point uh, uh, z equal to 0 on the real axis that z equal to 0 must be mapped onto some point of mod of w equal to 1. So, mod of w equal to 1 equal to a by c modulus of a by c into mod of z you put 0, 0 minus alpha divided by 0 minus alpha conjugate. Okay. When z is equal to 0, it should map to some point uh, where mod of w is equal to 1. So, this is equal to mod of a by c mod of alpha divided by mod of alpha conjugate. Okay. Now, mod of z is equal to mod of z conjugate. So, mod of z alpha over mod of alpha conjugate is 1. So, we get mod of a y c. Okay. So, 1 is equal to mod of a by c. This implies that a by c is equal to e to the power i theta naught, okay, where theta naught is uh, a real number, okay, where theta naught is a real quantity. Okay. So, we get the most general bilinear transformation that maps the upper half plane into mod of w less than or equal to 1 is w equal to e to the power i theta naught into z minus alpha divided by z minus alpha conjugate. So, this is the transformation uh, which maps the upper half of the uh, z plane to the unit disk mod of w less than or equal to 1. Okay, now, we go to uh, the uh, next question example determine the general bilinear transformation which maps the upper half of the z plane onto upper half of w plane. So, here we want the upper half of the z plane to map to upper half of the w plane. Okay. So, this is uh, z plane, this is w plane. So, let us first find a bilinear transformation which maps the real axis of the z plane to the real axis of the w plane. Okay. So, a bilinear transformation which maps the real axis in the z plane on the real axis of the w plane is such that some three points you take three points x 1, x 2, x 3 here, they go to uh, say uh, three points 0, let me take one point 0 and then another point 1 and the third point at infinity. Okay. So, x 1, x 2, x 3 if they map to 0, 1 infinity we get a unique bilinear transformation which which does this. So, there is uh, so let us map these points x 1, x 2, x 3 to 0, 1 infinity. Okay. Uh, x 1, x 2, x 3 are points on real axis x axis and 0, 1 infinity are points on the u axis the real axis of w plane. Okay. Now, the let us find the bilinear transformation under which x 1, x 2, x 3 go to 0, 1 infinity. Okay. So, we have the bilinear transformation which maps x 1, x 2, x 3 to uh, w 1, w 2, w 3 that is given by uh, we have uh, z minus x 1 over z minus x 3 then uh, z 2 minus uh, z x 3 divided by z 2 minus x 1. Okay. We have when we z 1, z 2, z 3 are mapped to w 1, w 2, w 3. Okay. We know what is the bilinear transformation which does this. So, here z 1, z 2, z 3 are x 1, x 2, x 3. So, this is equal to uh, w minus w 1, okay, w minus w 3, w 2 minus w 3, Okay, and then w 2 minus w 1. Okay. Now, w 1, w 2, w 3, so w 1 is 0, w 2 is 1, w 3 is infinity. So, let us find uh, the uh, right hand side cross ratio right hand side reduces to 
limit that z3 w3 goes to infinity w minus w1 over w minus w3 into w minus w3 over w2 minus w1 okay so this is equal to limit w3 goes to 0 uh, w minus w1 divided by w minus 1 by w3 then w minus 1 by w3 divided by w2 minus w1 okay so this is equal to limit w3 goes to 0 uh, w minus w1 over w w3 minus 1 into w w3 minus 1 divided by w 2 minus w 1 okay so this is equal to w minus w 1 divided by w 2 minus w 1 w 1 is equal to 0 okay and w 2 equal to 1 so 1 minus 0 so the right hand side is w okay so we have uh, z minus x 1 into x2 minus x3 divided by uh, z minus x3 into z uh, this should be x2 minus x1 okay so x2 minus x1 equal to w okay now this is of the form uh, a z plus b over c z plus d where a equal to uh, x2 minus x3, b equal to minus x1 into x2 minus x3, c equal to uh, x2 minus x1 and d equal to minus x3 into x2 minus x1. Okay. Now, if we want to uh, say that this is by linear transformation then we should show that a d minus b c is greater than uh, is not, not 0. Okay. So, a d minus b c is how much? Uh, so, x 2 minus x 3 into uh, minus x 3 uh, into x 2 minus x 1 uh, minus uh, a d minus b c. Okay. So, minus uh, x 1 into x 2 minus x 3 and then x 2 minus x 1. So, this is what I can take x 2 minus x 3 and x 2 minus x 1 common then what we get is uh, uh, minus x 3 uh, plus x 1. Okay. So, what we get? Uh, x 2 minus x 3 x 2 minus x 1 and x 1 minus x 3 and which is not equal to 0 because x 1 x 2 x 3 are distinct. They are distinct okay. and moreover that we notice that x 1 x 2 x 3 are real numbers. So, a b c d belong to r ok a b c d belong to r because x 1 x 2 x 3 are real ok and uh, a d minus b c is non zero ok. So, uh, we get the transformation w equal to a z plus b over c z plus d where a d a b c d is not zero ok uh, where a b c d are real numbers and a d minus b c is non zero. Now, let us show that uh, the upper half of the z plane goes to upper half of the w plane. For that uh, we have to uh, consider w equal to a z plus b over c z plus d. Okay. So, then w conjugate is uh, a z conjugate plus b over c z conjugate plus d. Okay. We, we are not taking conjugates of a b c d because they are real. Then w minus w conjugate equal to a z plus b over c z plus d minus a z conjugate plus b 
over C z conjugate plus D. So, we take the LCM C z plus D C z conjugate plus D and then we get uh, let us multiply. So, A C z z conjugate okay. then B C z conjugate uh, then we get A D z and we get B D. Okay, and then we get minus A C Z Z conjugate, uh, then we get minus A D Z conjugate and then we get minus B C Z and minus B D. So, this B D cancel out, A C Z Z conjugate cancel out and what we get? Let us collect the coefficient of Z and Z conjugate. So, the coefficient of Z is a D minus B C. Okay. And the Z conjugate coefficient is what? Um, uh, minus uh, A D minus B C into Z conjugate divided by now C Z plus D into C Z conjugate plus D we can write as uh, mod of C Z plus D square okay so this is ad minus bc into z minus z conjugate okay over mod of cz plus d square okay now so what we have w minus w conjugate is equal to ad minus bc into z minus z conjugate over uh, mod of cz plus d square okay so if z equal to x plus i y and w equal to u plus i b okay uh, w equal to z, z equal to x plus i by uh, u equal to w, u plus i b then z minus z conjugate is 2 i y okay 2 i y okay and w minus w conjugate is 2 i b okay so 2 i b equal to a d minus b c into 2 i y divided by mod of C z plus D square okay. or B is equal to A D minus B C into by E over this. So, if by is greater than 0 okay. uh, if by is greater than 0 then B is greater than 0 provided A D minus B C is greater than 0. We can also can say that if by is greater than 0, then B is less than 0 provided A D minus B C is less than 0. Okay. So, the upper half of the jet plane will map to the upper half of the jet plane will map to the upper half of the W plane if A D A B A D minus B C is greater than 0 and upper half of the jet plane will map to lower half of the W plane if A D minus B C is less than 0. Okay. So, uh, the bilinear transformation which maps the upper half of jet plane to the upper half of W plane is given by W equal to A z plus B over C z plus D where A B C D are real numbers and A D minus B C is greater than 0. If you put the condition on A B C D that A B they are real and A D minus B C is less than 0 then upper half of the jet plane will map to lower half of the W plane. Okay, so, with that we come to the end of this lecture, thank you very much for your attention.